Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tyron. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about whether you should be running Windows games through Parallels or Crossover on your M1 Apple Silicon Mac. If you didn't already know, the M1 chip is probably the most powerful integrated graphics chip we've seen so far, and it's capable of playing plenty of native and Rosetta 2 Mac OS titles. However, some people are not quite satisfied with the range of games that are available, and want to be able to access some of the more popular Windows titles too. In the past, it used to be very easy to get Windows games running through something called Boot Camp, which allowed us to natively boot Windows on Intel Mac hardware. However, this option is no longer available for the M1 Apple Silicon Macs, and I go into more detail about this in a video which I'm going to link to in the description. So without the option of Boot Camp for the M1 Mac, we are basically left with two options on how to play Windows games on the M1 chip. So the first option I'm going to talk about is Parallels. So Parallels is a virtual machine software which allows us to run the full Windows operating system experience on your M1 Mac. And you can kind of see it running in a window here. Of course, you can also run at full screen too, which will be ideal for games. So I'd say that the biggest advantage to running Windows games in this way is that we have a very familiar Windows desktop environment. So if you've ever used a Windows computer before, you'll know how this works. So the other advantage of Parallels is compatibility. This is because Parallels runs the ARM version of Windows. And despite the fact that this operating system is built for ARM, it actually has a very competent 64-bit emulator. And the results that we can get from this can be stunning. So for example, with Max Payne 3, this is an x86 64-bit Windows game that's being emulated from x86 64-bit to the ARM instruction set, and then virtualized in a virtual machine on the Mac operating system. So there's several layers of emulation and virtualization going on here and we're still able to get a very playable game. However, one of the main disadvantages of Parallels is the performance overhead. So because we're running a virtual machine, it means that half of the CPU cores, so that's four CPU cores out of eight on the M1 chip, are dedicated to running the virtual machine. And also we are only able to use half of the RAM. So in this case, I'm running my eight gigabyte MacBook Air and we're only able to dedicate four gigabytes of RAM to the actual machine itself. And some of this remaining RAM is consumed by running Windows itself in the background. So this means that when we're running a game like Fallout 4, it actually works okay when we're in an internal area without any combat. But as soon as we go into the open world, then it kind of becomes a slideshow. It becomes virtually unplayable. This is despite the fact that we've turned everything down to the lowest possible settings. And here I'm showing footage from the user game.different who has kindly donated some Fallout 4 footage of them playing Fallout 4 on Parallels on a 16 gigabyte M1 computer. So this is able to dedicate eight gigabytes of RAM and there's a world of difference between the performance of the four gigabyte version and the eight gigabyte version of this game, which actually meets the minimum requirements for Fallout 4. And as you can see, it's far, far smoother. So please check out the link in the description for Game.Different's full Fallout 4 video. So we can definitely see that Parallels is constrained by the amount of resources that we can dedicate to the virtual machine. However, the second method that we're able to run Windows games on the M1 Mac is not constrained in the same way. That's because Crossover uses Wine in order to translate Windows API calls into macOS API calls. And that means that we're able to access more of the Mac's resources in order to run the game. So for example, here in Fallout 4, the crossover version of the game runs much, much smoother than the Parallels version. So we're getting virtually native performance on this type of hardware. It's probably the fastest that this game can run on the M1 chip. However, crossover tends to have less compatibility with games in general. And also there are some bugs with Fallout 4 running on crossover, which you don't really get on Parallels. For example, at the time of recording, Fallout 4 was compatible with Crossover 20, but some new bugs in Crossover 21 has introduced an audio issue. However, I'm sure that Code Weavers, who are the developers of Crossover, will eventually patch these bugs. So it's clear that there's a big performance difference between Parallels and Crossover, but there's also the broader compatibility as well. So I do recommend that you check out the M1 Compatible Games Master List, which is a list that I've compiled as well as other users from the Apple Gaming Wiki website. This list contains all of the compatibility entries for various games. So for example, we can sort by compatibility with Crossover, and you can see that games that work on Crossover often don't work on Parallels. Also, I can sort by compatibility with Parallels, and you can see there's some Crossover here, 
However, there are many games that work on parallels that do not work on crossover as well. So please check out this list. It's going to be a major factor in whether you purchase crossover or parallels. Also, another factor is going to be price. So the price of crossover plus, which is the kind of annual subscription model, is $59.95. However, if you use the Apple Gaming Wiki promo code, then you'll get a 25% discount. If you click on the top right hand side of the screen now, you'll be taken to my crossover full tutorial. And similarly, I would advise buying the Pro Edition of Parallels Desktop. That's because this edition has support for virtual TPM, which is likely to be a requirement for Windows 11. You can find out all about it in the full Windows 11 ARM installation tutorial, which I'll link to in my description. Some people are also concerned that we may need to factor in the cost of a Windows license. However, since Windows 10, you don't actually need to activate Windows in order to use it indefinitely, and I don't expect that to change in Windows 11. So the next game we're going to show is Halo Combat Evolved. So this is the Master Chief Collection version of the game. And as you can see, the Parallels version works pretty well, but the crossover version clearly works better. There's less stuttering and it's a much more enjoyable experience on crossover. However, we have the same kind of consideration again. On parallels, more of the Halo games are actually compatible. So you can play Halo 3, Halo 4, Halo Reach, etc. However, on crossover, only Halo 1 is working. That being said, neither of these games are capable of online multiplayer and that's because of an incompatibility with the anti-cheat software. So next up is the game Mass Effect Legendary Edition, and this is only possible because Denuvo was patched out of this game relatively recently, and the game functions quite well on parallels and on crossover. But the crossover performance, again, is a little bit better, and I'd say a more enjoyable game. And this is a bit more pronounced on Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3 as well, where the parallels lack of RAM is really shown, whereas on crossover, we have much closer to native level performance. So next up is the game Skyrim. So we're actually able to get Skyrim working much earlier on parallels than on crossover. That's because as soon as 64-bit emulation was enabled on Windows 10 ARM, then we were able to launch the Skyrim Special Edition. However, Crossover was only able to get this game running relatively recently, and it's running on Crossover 21. You can see that on Parallels, there's a little bit more stuttering and the performance is slightly worse, even though it performs admirably. On crossover, it performs much better. However, there are some graphical issues to do with transparencies and also vegetation as well. So you'll see that it's not really a perfect experience with either method. So the next game I'm gonna demonstrate is Grand Theft Auto V. So I'm playing the single player introduction campaign here. So you can see on the left parallels is stuttering quite a lot. So obviously this is very limited by the four gigabytes of RAM and it's performing much, much worse. On crossover, the performance is much better. The stuttering isn't 100% gone, but in all other respects, we're getting a close to 60 frames per second experience. And it's pretty clear which is the superior version of the game. However, the main caveat is that Crossover is incompatible with the Rockstar Social Club. So that's the DRM that Grand Theft Auto V uses. And that means that we're not able to actually run GTA V using a legitimate copy of the game. We have to use a fully cracked version of the game. So therefore, despite the fact that the Crossover version performs much better, the only way to legitimately play this game is through Parallels. And also the only way to play the multiplayer is actually to use Parallels as well. So the multiplayer does work for Grand Theft Auto 5. However, because of the limited amount of RAM and the fact that I have to constrain my virtual machine to 4 gigabytes, it performs extremely slowly. So I'm sure that the performance would be better if we had access to the 8 gigabyte with the 16 gigabyte M1 chip. However, with the machine that I'm testing on, this does not really provide a proper gaming experience, especially for multiplayer, which is going to rely on good frame rates. So the next game I'm going to show is Titanfall 2. Now this is gonna be an example of a game that works both on parallels and crossover. It does feel like there's slightly less stutter on the crossover version of the game. And this is the single player campaign which I'm demonstrating at the moment. In multiplayer as well, I do feel like the crossover multiplayer does work slightly better with slightly less stutter, but I think that they're both very comparable ways of playing the game on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So the last game I'm going to talk about is Rocket League. And this is quite an interesting example because Rocket League used to have a native macOS port that used to run really well on Steam. However, when the developers moved the game to the Epic Game Store, they decided not to support the macOS version anymore. So the Windows version is the only version that's able to play online multiplayer. 
So you can see that both versions of the game run relatively well, but the crossover version does perform better. However, it does have a bug at the moment where the nameplates are being shown. Hopefully this bug gets fixed in the future, but for now the parallels version is the way to play this game online. So we've now come to the end of our list of games that I've tested between parallels and crossover. If you did find this video useful, please like and subscribe. If you have any requests, please leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video.